Hello and welcome. Since earliest times, humans have decorated themselves with ochre and paint as tribal identification or to make themselves look fierce. In Australian Aboriginal culture, this practice is very old. It is hard to find a culture where they haven't tattooed, stained or daubed themselves. But why stop at decorating your body only? The practice of decorating fighting aircraft began with Italian and German pilots, usually an embellished or extravagant squadron insignia. The first recorded example was a sea monster painted on an Italian flying boat in 1913. This was followed by painting a mouth beneath the propeller spinner by German pilots in World War I, taking a dirty green and brown aircraft and painting it bright colours got your enemy's attention. The Red Baron knew it would intimidate his opponents. What began as decoration or design for identifying friendly units evolved into expressions of individuality. Many designs evoked memories of home and peacetime life, countering the stresses of war. In World War I, the Americans painted aircraft with readily identifiable squadron insignia. Examples included the hat in the ring of the American 9th Air Squadron and the kicking mule of the 95th Air Squadron. Nose art of that era was often conceived and produced by the ground crew. True nose art appeared during World War II, considered by observers to be the golden age of the genre, with both Axis and Allied pilots taking part. The US Air Force tolerated nose air art to boost air crew morale. Not so the US Navy, which limited art to a few simply lettered names. Nose art was rare in the Royal Air Force and Royal Canadian Air Force. In 1941, the 39th Pursuit Squadron commissioned a Bell aircraft artist to design and paint the Cobra in the Clouds logo on their aircraft. The most enduring nose art of World War II was the shark face motif, which first appeared on the Messerschmitt Womano Luftwaffe 76th Destroyer Wing over Crete. In November 1941, American volunteer group pilots saw a colour photo in a newspaper of a shark mouth painted on a 112 Squadron P 40 fighter in North Africa and immediately adopted the shark face motif for their own P-40Bs. However, the insignia for the Flying Tigers, a winged Bengal tiger jumping through a stylized FIFA victory symbol, was developed by graphic artists from the Walt Disney Company. Similarly, when in 1943 the 39th Fighter Squadron became the first American squadron in their theatre with 100 kills, they adopted the shark face for their Lockheed P-38 Lightnings. The shark face is still used to this day, most commonly seen on the A-10 Thunderbolt with its gaping maw leading up to the muzzle of the aircraft's Avenger 30mm cannon. The largest known work of nose art ever depicted on a World War II American combat aircraft was on a consolidated B-24 Liberator which had been named the Dragon and His Tail. Staff Sergeant Bartigan was the artist. The Dragon artwork ran from the nose just forward of the cockpit down the entire length of the fuselage. Tony Stasa painted over 100 pieces of renowned B-17 nose art including Memphis Bell. Contemporary research demonstrates that bomber crews who suffered high casualty rates during World War II often developed strong bonds with the planes they were flying and affectionately decorated them with nose art. It was also believed by the flight crews that the nose art brought luck to the planes. The artistic work of Alberto Vargas's pinup girls from Esquire magazine was often duplicated and painted on the nose of American and Allied aircraft during World War II. In the Korean War, nose art was popular with units operating a-26 Invader and B-29 bombers, but 
due to changes in military policies and changing attitudes towards the representation of women, the amount of nose art declined after the Korean War. During the Vietnam War, Lockheed AC-130 gunships were often given names with accompanying nose art, for example, Thor, Azrael, Angel of Death, Ghost Rider, Warlord and the Arbitrator. Nose art underwent a revival during the Gulf War and has since become more common since Operation Enduring Freedom and when the Iraq War began. Source material for American nose art was varied, ranging from pinups such as Rita Hayworth and Betty Grable and cartoon characters such as Donald Duck, Bugs Bunny and Popeye to patriotic characters. The further the planes and crew were from headquarters or from the public eye, the racier the art tended to be. For instance, nudity was more common in nose art on aircraft in the Pacific than on aircraft in Europe. Do you think that nose art on these aircraft was actually art or was merely graffiti? I welcome your comments, leave them below. Thank you for watching and stay safe.